in ahead of tonight uh, and a number as well from this evening. So I'll just switch back and forth uh, if that's okay with you, Dr. Struble. Uh, yes. The very first question, from what I understand, it's the keto acid BHB that is preventing and possibly shrinking the cyst growth. I've been taking a supplement with BHB, intermittent fasting. Is BHB what is being produced through the keto diet, fasting, or caloric reduction? Is there any information from trials in humans yet? I'm wondering how much of the supplement to take for it to be beneficial. Is feeling starved a good indicator that the body is producing this keto acid? So we can step back there. There's a few questions in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's, I, I hope many of those questions um, I could already answer with my introduction. So yes, um, beta hydroxybutyrate is one of those ketone bodies that are um, um, getting produced in the state of ketosis. Um, but as I also mentioned, in ketosis, it's not just the ketone body, it's also the increased fatty acid supply and the reduced um, blood glucose. Um, I think the second question was, um, if uh, BHB mediated those results. Yes, that's what um, Jacob um, could show in his experiments or what his experiments suggest that BHB is mediating those effects. Um, however, it, it is still possible, of course, that low glucose or the high fatty acids might have also a certain effect, yeah? Um, so what was the next question here? Uh, how much of the supplement to take for a day, uh, to take a day for it to be beneficial? the BHB supplement. Okay, yeah, I mean, th that's a very, um, a very good question, very important question, but um, we simply need to say we, we don't know yet. Yeah, th that's also a point. We're doing lots of research there. At the end, we need uh, some randomized controlled trials to find out about that. Um, I think this study gives a first insight um, where people are lying at the moment who are doing this this diet. There was around 1.5 millimolar. We saw some good results in this study. So this can be a first hint maybe, but um, we definitely have no certain answer for that. Yeah. Uh, okay, she, uh, this is from Stacy Still. Is feeling starved a good indicator that the body is producing this keto acid? Yes. Um, <clears throat> okay, I would, I would say... Um, as you also could see my results, um, hunger and feeling starved is definitely a side effect. Um, and it's more, I would say, a symptom and a side effect of fasting. But um, it, it definitely tells you, yes, probably I'm getting into ketosis or I am in ketosis, but it's not um, necessary. Yeah? For example, you reach ketosis also with a ketogenic diet and you, you don't feel like starved all the time. Yeah? So I wouldn't say that this is a reliable marker. But I get the point, um, people want to know if they are in ketosis, and therefore I would definitely recommend um, to get this feedback using, for example, urine sticks or blood, um, blood measurement or um, ketone in breath, uh, for example. Uh, and then lastly, are there any clinical trials in Alberta or anywhere else in Canada just yet? Okay, um, not that I know that there are trials of ketogenic diets in um, um, in PKD patients in Alberta. Um, I, I just presented um, clin clinical trials that are coming up, um, but I also need to say those trials I just presented um, will take place in Germany. So there's no chance actually to um, join from the US there. Um, right, um, no, but I'm not aware of any trials uh, near Alberta. Okay, so we have a question here that was uh, entered through the question and answer box from Robert. Uh, does this have an impact on PLD as well, so polycystic liver disease? Yeah, and this is a very good question, and um, we face this question in every webinar, and uh, I'm also very happy about it. The problem is um, we don't have any experimental data from our experiments there because um, those experimental PKD models in rats and mice don't show, um, at least those we got, don't show many liver cysts or liver disease. And for this reason, um, we cannot uh, predict anything there because we don't have any data on it. But we are also very eager to find out about that. Um, but uh, yeah, to this point, we cannot uh, say anything there. Okay, from Krista C, what kind of kidney stones does the ketogenic diet most likely uh, to promote, more likely to promote? Um, yes, um, when I recall this correctly from the, this poster I just saw in the recent ASN, I think those were urate crystals actually. Uh, from Cheryl N, are registered dietitians involved 
how is food quality, pre probiotics, polyphenols, fiber, protein, fat types, and quality meeting assessed needs evaluated? So are, are renal dietitians involved in any capacity? All right. Um, so they weren't involved in my study. Um, but I also asked in, in one of the first questions you saw, like, what resources are you using? And um, I was a little bit disappointed there to see that um, nutrition doesn't seem to be involved so much, but I think they should. I think this is very important because as this uh, question already tells us, there are so many more parameters, especially PKD patients need to be aware of all the electrolytes, sodium, potassium, phosphate. Yeah. Um, and I think nutrition, nutritionists are professionals who studied this and they definitely can help and should help um, implementing such diets. Great, I'll go to one that was sent in by email. Uh, it's a long one again, so we can break it down if need be. I engaged in the keto diet when my GR, uh, GFR was in the mid thirties. It was effective in weight loss. However, I noticed a five point drop in my GFR on the following month blood test. In discussing this with my nephrologist, he instructed me to resume a normal diet immediately, as in his view, the reduced function of my kidneys did not allow proper clearance of the additional load imposed by this diet, and it was damaging my kidneys. Unlike past dips, my body never regained this loss of function, which was at the time the normal yearly decline in function within just 30 days or so. I did notice that the Atkins diet cautions against potential kidney issues. My father was on a keto diet for many years and towards the end of his life had very low kidney function levels. He did not have PKD and died at 86, although his kidney issues began in his late 70s. Right. So this, this is a very interesting, but also very um, complex question, I need to admit. Um, I would love to, to know the definitive, uh, definitive answer there for that too, but I think the answer can just bring randomized controlled trials here. Yeah, The data situation is again controversial on that, I think. There are some uh, results showing benefits for chronic kidney disease um, uh, due to ketogenic diets. There are some uh, results showing no changes and there are some results showing negative um, effects. Yeah, I personally think the ketogenic diet can bring positive effects by all those um, things. It's, it's mediating weight loss um, and so on, blood pressure. But I think it's very important um, to, to um, concentrate here on the actually dietary protocol. I think you can make many wrong things when starting a ketogenic diet. Yeah. Um, First of all, it's, it's also very dependent on the stage of chronic kidney disease you are in. Yeah, I mean, especially in the in the low um, stages already, um, like with processed chronic kidney disease, I would definitely not recommend starting a diet like this. Yeah, another thing is, as we all know, proteins. Yeah, you you really need to be aware that you shouldn't um, take in too much proteins, for example. Then. Um, um, patients with, with, with chronic kidney disease always need to be aware of sodium, potassium, phosphate, um, and so on. We know dehydration, uh, dehydration can occur, kidney st stones can occur. So I think there are lots of parameters where you can do things wrong. And that's the reason why um, probably ketogenic diets can also have a negative impact. Yeah. So again, here, always consult your doctor, never do this um, alone. In this case, of course, it's um, very unfortunate, and I think the doctor did the right thing to 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 get the patient here off of the diet. Yeah, um, most of the time, I would also say con let let it control, make a follow up, because I definitely also can um, think of, especially when you start the ketogenic diet, that um, initially the EGFR, for example, has a little drop. Just imagine if you take in now lots of meat, um, the creatinine will will rise a little bit because lots of meat has lots of creatinine in it. Yeah, it's just like a metabolite of your muscle of your muscles. That's also in um, meat, so that could be a reason why it's um, going um, uh, the creatinine going up a little bit after starting the diet. But still, you should then do follow ups and see if it's coming down or not. And if it's not coming down, I think that's the absolute right decision not to um, to stop the diet there. Okay, our next one is from Graham S. What is a normal ketone level? All right. Um, 
um, so as I said, the baseline level when you um, don't do any of those diets is uh, below 0.3 millimolar. And when you induce ketogenic diets, we just know out of the studies that are out there, then you can hit ketosis levels between something 0.5 and around 7, 8 millimolar. Okay. Um, however, it's important. I mean, if they are overdriving high, like over 10, and um, this can lead to metabolic acidosis and there you definitely need to be careful. Yeah. And um, this um, shouldn't, shouldn't happen then. But they can uh, go quite high. And uh, as I already mentioned, we don't know the perfect um, ketone levels for people with PKD where we can expect um, um, any effects or not. Um, we don't know yet. Okay, we have one uh, in the chat from Andrea M. I read the kidney stone diets that control oxalates, purines, uric acid, and crystal formation may be equated with less progressive cyst growth in ADPKD. Is it possible that the benefits of the keto diet might be correlated to those studies, if at all? Okay, maybe you need to read that to me again, sorry. Sure. I read the kidney stone diets that control yeah. oxalates, purines, uric acid, and crystal formation may be equated with less progressive cyst growth in ADPKD. Is it possible that the benefits of the ketogenic diet may be correlated to those studies, if at all? Right. Maybe I understand something wrong, but um, th this is based on the other um, project uh, we got in our wine lab, which is also based on great research from uh, Jacob Torres, by the way, showing that um, kidney stones and kidney crystals actually can trigger tubal dilation and um, by that can trigger disease progression probably in um, PKD. But this means that crystals are bad. And that's also the reasons um, why we definitely want to avoid any crystal incidence due to ketogenic diets. Yeah, and um, what what uh, was shown in this paper also from Jacob Torres is actually that or it's a known thing that citrate can prevent um, kidney stones and crystals and that this actually could be a beneficial thing um, also for PKD. Yeah, but um, um, the ketogenic diet um, inducing crystals, that would be definitely um, not a good thing there. What we think based on this research. Okay, from Julia K. Can a keto diet improve EGFR? And is there any update on Dr. Wyme's supplements coming out? Okay. And um, so I showed some data, the first data on this today. Um, I mean, it, it indicates at least a little bit that there are several participants out there trying ketogenic diets and they improve the EGFR at the moment with it. Yeah. But those are not randomized controlled trials. Those are very short term um, based data on, 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 on some single EGFR. So as I said, we need to be critical, but um, this is just supporting data um, to, um, to get the first clinical trials going to show them um, there is hope. And I think this um, can be a beneficial thing. Yeah. Um, regarding, um, re regarding the supplement was the se second question, right? Yes. Uh, about Dr. Wyme's supplements. Is there yeah. any update on them coming out? Yes. So um, basically those guys, Thomas Wimes and his company is working hard on that. Um, I just know that of course, COVID-19 also slowed things um, down there significantly. Um, I, I don't have new updates, unfortunately. Stay tuned there um, via the, the Wimes Lab Laboratory Facebook page and our homepage, also the, the homepage from the, the company there. But I'm pretty sure they're working hard and, and something next year um, should come up there, definitely. And just before I pump into the next question, there are a, a couple individuals that took part in the studies uh, that you showed tonight that have uh, shared their, their journey and the improvements um, and pleasant results that they found. So I encourage anyone to just check out uh, the chat for, for those direct comments. We have a lot of questions, so I won't go through the comments as well. Um, we have one from an anonymous attendee this evening. Uh, are the effects of the ketogenic diet greater than time-restricted diet because the KD was more effective or because there were simply more people on the KD than there were on the time-restricted diet? Right. So the percentages I showed you, maybe I should have mentioned this, the percentages I showed you for the separated diet was always calculated, of course, on the separated cohort. Yeah. Um, 
um, basically, it, it definitely showed a little bit that the, the, the effects on the ketogenic diets are a little stronger than the time-restricted diet. But this um, um, is for positive effects as well as for side effects, right? Um, we, cannot, we cannot tell anything out of the study why it is like that. It's just, yeah, it, it, it's just some data, but um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, we can hypothesize about it. Yeah, the, the ketogenic diet is maybe definitely the, the stronger way of inducing ketosis, um, of, of following um, this kind of diet than time-restricted diet, but we cannot um, conclude anything out, out of this, yeah. Thank you. Uh, from Margaret S., can you do the keto diet when you are taking Tolvapin or Genard? Right. Um, yeah, I, I just can say to that question that um, lots of participants in my study actually took Tolvaptain. I think around 20. Um, I screened all of uh, them. I, I made sure that they didn't start like Tolvaptain together with, um, uh, with the ketogenic diets here, but the, this con could be also a confounding um, parameter in the study. Yeah, It's just a case series study, but um, those guys um, reported to do uh, great. So this uh, didn't seem to be a problem there. Thank you. Uh, two questions from Cheryl N., who has joined us this evening. Uh, any body composition studies done in this study? Uh, examples, fat, muscle, uh, and segmentally. Uh, unless body comp is compared, we do not know what degree of muscle is lost. Is that true? So two Absolutely. questions. The first, uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Sorry, absolutely true. Um, no analysis on body composition or something like that. Yeah, um, this was all relying on um, um, self-provided data. We didn't ask for that because I think it's also a very specific thing um, where I think not many people have measured that at home um, or with their doctors. But that that's true. We we cannot really say by the study is it body fat, is it um, muscle that is um, reduced. We don't know. We just have anecdotal uh, information from other trials showing the ketogenic diets are um, significantly reducing body fat, especially um, belly fat there. Okay, uh, from DA, we have a question. Have you studied the results of a modified keto diet, higher carbs, less fat, um, plus IF, plus calorie restriction? It's much easier to follow and results in less side effects. I had health issues trying to cut back too far on the carbs. Yeah. So um, also nice questions. Uh, question. I haven't separately analyzed um, like the different kinds of ketogenic diets. So I didn't broke um, those ketogenic diet cord um, into sub cohorts because then the cohorts are getting smaller and smaller. And as I said, the dietary protocols are very um, or highly variable. Yeah. Um, regarding uh, this combination, I I, 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 I I agree with this. I think the same. I saw this um, several times, actually, that uh, people are combining those things. I could imagine that th this makes maybe the ketogenic diet a little more feasible to also do time-restricted diet. But I haven't um, haven't analyzed it yet, like in a certain sub-cohort who did all three together or something like that. But um, 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 from my experiments, uh, experiments, uh, experience um, in all this analysis in the study, the cords are getting too small. It's like very hard to um, say or, or show any results on that then. Okay. Uh, from Tish K, what are your thoughts on the source of proteins and fats, animal versus plant, for example? And this, I know, is a, a hot button question for you. Um, I think, uh, and for me, I think that's a very, very important question. And um, there are lots of um, big nutritional um, studies out there showing that um, the saturated fats, yeah, um, are actually the the problem, the problematic fats compared to the unsaturated fats, because the saturated fats are increasing LDL. So definitely a good thing could be to look at the fat composition and try to get the fats um, from as good as possible from unsaturated fats. And this already could have a great influence on, on the LDL, for example. Yeah, And I think this is a big topic. I think um, to accomplish this, you need the help from nutritionists. This diet is already a little complicated and still to, to watch out for those things. I think um, it would be best to have a professional help with that. But I totally agree. That's a big thing. And I think you can um, do a lot, of, uh, a lot of good things with watching the fats the fat composition. Okay, thank you. Uh, going back to one that was emailed in, 
Since November of last year, I have been on the keto diet with the belief that if it helped animals with PKD, it can help me. However, I recently read an article about the above referenced actress, a, Bo a Bollywood actress by the name of Mishti Mukherjee, who died at 27 from kidney failure, and they claim it was from complications from the keto diet. My question to the doctor is, can the keto diet be truly dangerous, or is it simply a question of being rigid to the nutritional percentages of the diet? All right. Um also a very good question. Um, our lab also heard, of course, about that and read about this uh, tragic case. Um, we also discussed it. Um, we concluded that the main problem is that we do not have any like, like valuable medical information and insights um, on the real clinical data. Yeah, what have happened there? Um, we don't know anything about possible pre-existing conditions, for example, which could have triggered such an event. Um, we don't know how she actually did or executed her diet and at the end the kidney is involved in so many different mechanisms can be injured on so many different ways yeah um, dehydration kidney stones all all that stuff and um, so it's very hard to to say anything about this um, still the the data out there is controversial yeah um, there are beneficial stories beneficial results there are adverse results out there and we we just need more trials to to get an um, answer out of it but it definitely shows you need to be careful again consult your doctor don't do it alone and um, especially when when you have already a compromised um, um, kidney function or any um, problems with kidney you you need to be careful with that yeah Thank you. Uh, from Matthew J, uh, it seems that weight loss could be a confounding factor here, i.e. is ketosis or weight loss itself possibly contributing to these results? Could you comment on this? Absolutely, absolutely. We, we cannot say by this study, are those effects um, done or mediated by the weight loss or by the ketosis? We can not really answer this question. Um, from my perspective, doing this study now, um, I know I cannot predict anything if ketogenic diets are really working. This is the job of a randomized controlled trials. But what I see, um, if I'm pragmatic on it, it seems that those participants in daily life are um, um, be yeah, benefiting from it. It doesn't matter if it's the weight loss or the kidney function. That, I think, is a very positive um, result um, um, from this data. But totally right, we cannot say, is it weight loss? or is it the ketosis impact on the kidney? Fair enough. Uh, from Chris B, PKD patients are extremely varied throughout their stages. In your studies, you only mention AD PKD, but nothing specific as far as PKD1 versus two uh, or the stages of PKD. What were the stages or a GFR of the study participants? Uh, if someone is stage five, but pre-dialysis, would there be increased dangers to a ketogenic diet? All right. Very good question. Yes. And um, those are those are things that I think um, are um, far too complex for this kind of case series study. Right. I, I mean, I could do some sub analysis on the different stages of kidney disease, but we just have 117 um, um, participants here. And I, as I said, it's unbalanced. Yeah, th This is like a balancing that will be done later on in the controlled um, randomized trials. Yeah. Um, but what did I want to say? Um, yes, I think it's definitely important um, to be uh, even more careful if you're already in compromised stages of um, chronic kidney function, because then electrolytes are getting even more important, the, the risk of metabolic acidosis is getting higher, actually. And um, then um, putting a ketogenic diet on top, which is also could also facil fa facilitate a metabolic acidosis. This is a risky thing. And yeah, um, I, I, I cannot directly recommend that. Yeah. Uh, we have a question now from Dr. Eliuta. What is the ketosis level range to be targeted with the keto diet for time restricted feeding? Is daily vari variability a problem? And how often should you measure it? Okay, um, great question again. I, I would love to have the, the answer um, of that, yeah. Um, I think it's important to, or in, in the animal models, um, those animals always were staying in ketosis. I think um, this is definitely a thing, but we cannot make any, any reliable um, 
statement on the level of ketones again. And uh, what was the other half? Um, uh, the other half was, um, I'll just get back to it here. Uh, how often should you measure it? Is data variability a problem? How often should you measure it? So from my experience with my participants, um, I, the participants measured more often at the beginning, um, for example, daily or every every second day, but then actually when, especially for the implementation phase, right? And then they had their things going, they know what they can eat, what they not can eat. And then they actually decreased the measurements because they said, I'm either feeling it actually, or I know I'm, I'm, I'm doing the right thing with my nutrition, I'm in ketosis. I think when you have like just a regular feedback um, are you doing the di diet right? I think this also gives you a positive feeling. And for example, measuring once or twice a week at the end when you are like, um, wh when you really can do um, the, the diet should be fine then I think, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, have you seen a correlation between ketosis state and a decrease of urine pH? It has been hardly manageable to increase the pH back to normal. And I have seen a correlation with the amount of blood BHB in my personal experience. Mm -hmm. No, um, I, I, um, I don't have uh, collected any data on urine from my participants. I cannot uh, say anything to that. Very good point. Very, very interesting, um, uh, but cannot say anything to it. Sorry. Uh, if I were to hire a dietitian or, or nutritionist, what qualifications should I look for? Right. This is a very, very good question. But um, here I need to admit, since I'm from Germany and I'm uh, not from the US, I don't really know the system well here. Um, I'm pretty sure um, people in, in those uh, amazing social media groups can help you with that and what you need to look out or just consult your doctor. I mean, your doctor also should um, have connections to good nutritionists and should help you with that. Absolutely. Uh, I, my, my recommendation, the foundation's recommendation would, of course, be to, to discuss with your nephrologist. Um, many PKD specialty clinics now that are, are operating here in Canada have a renal dietitian team uh, within them. So the first, the first step should be to speak with your nephrologist to see if they have one um, that is available um, that would omit having to hire one, per se. Um, moving on to Max C., uh, are you also considering effects of exercise in your future study? Um, I, I think um, they mean the, the keto pipeline, like the translational um, study pipeline, or? I believe so. It says, uh, are you also considering the effects of exercise in your future study? So... Um, and that's what they mean. As, as far as I know, um, not in those studies, because you always need to try to just um, have like one variable you're looking at and not combine like different things. And um, here the main um, the main focus is on ketogenic diet and not on, on, on exercise. But this is also a very interesting point, actually, which can have um, um, a big impact, especially then combined with ketogenic diets. And um, that's um, another another whole thing. Okay, we'll go to one that was emailed in. It's a two-parter, so bear with me. We'll take it in, in stages here. Uh, I have PKD and recently began a keto diet after reading your research. After 20 days in ketosis, my creatinine dropped from 3.69 to 3.10. Also, my eGFR went from 16% to 20%. My energy levels have improved as well. This is very encouraging because I was on the verge of dialysis. I'm continuing on the keto diet and hope to see my conditions continue to improve. Question one, can you suggest a method for reducing leg cramps? I use the magnesium dermally, which helps, but both PKD and the keto diet seen, or uh, both PKD and the keto diet have seen an incline in the uh, muscle cramps. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, um, interesting point. Um, in my interviews, I have um, heard about that several times. I haven't showed it today, um, but um, this seems to be a thing. I would um, here recommend to, to check your blood work, definitely for electrolytes. I just need to say here one thing. Um, I'm an MD in Germany, but I don't have a license in the US, so um, I cannot give any medical advices here. Yeah, But I, I just can say, check with your doctor here, um, check your electrolytes. Um, maybe it's possible to, to orally um, uh, supplement, 
do any or take any supplements for that, which uh, could that uh, make uh, make it better. Another thing, of course, always and keep in mind, dehydration also can facilitate this. So, yeah. Uh, this is still from Mark Wallace. Uh, the second part of his question. Uh, my bun reading has increased significantly. My understanding is that a high bun rating can result from increased protein intake or from lack of hydration. I can't significantly reduce protein intake on a keto diet. Do you have any suggestions for increasing hydration to bring my uh, bun reading down? I drink a gallon of water a day and mm -hmm. find it difficult to drink much more than that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, again, completely right. Um, there are several reasons for increase in, in bun, blood urea nitrogen, can be decreased in kidney function. Um, here he shows actually some nice results, uh, when I re recall correctly. Um, increased protein intake can be uh, one thing, hypovolemia. But when I hear that he's already, already taking in one gallon, right? This is already That's above cool. three liters, I, I, I think. So I wouldn't directly say drink more here. Definitely check in with your doctor, um, discuss this with your doctor, especially follow up. Um, it's always good to see how, how is bun behaving over time then. And if it's still rising, for example, um, yeah, um, you definitely need to check out the other options there, yeah. Okay, thank you. And the last one that we've received by email, and then we'll just close out with uh, the questions from this evening's attendees. I myself have PKD and decided to adopt the keto diet uh, and they've been on it for six weeks. I'm 40 years old and weigh 57 kilograms at five foot four, so I'm not overweight. I've been on hypertensive medication for 10 years uh, and I take Genarc, the 45-15 milligram dose. I feel very good with the new diet, but have a small problem. My blood pressure has increased above 140 over 90. There's something I'm not doing right. All right. Just to recall, he, he started the ketogenic diet. The um, he's on Genarc, um, on blood pressure medication, and the um, the blood pressure arise, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Six Definitely. Weeks only for the diet. Sorry. Six weeks they've been on the diet. Yeah, I mean, um, as I already have shown, um, I'm not sure if I if I highlighted that. I also had, um, I think, two reports of an initial increase in blood pressure, which came down over time again and actually improved, I think, in one of two cases. I, I think this can be possible, but definitely a high blood pressure is never good. Consult your doctor there, discuss this. See if you either adjust your blood pressure medication or, um, or or discuss your diet. What you what you could do wrong there, for example. That's an important thing, right? Um, those are the situations where I um, where I really try to get for you guys to to get your connection to your doctor. Um, and if you find such a thing, directly go there and and consult him. So I'm just looking through the chat. So uh, Kim was kind enough to do the uh, to do the, the ratio for us. So three liters is uh, 105 ounces and a gallon is only 64 ounces. So they're quite under uh, the three liter recommendation, which may attribute to uh, the issues that they were experiencing in the previous question. Um, we have one here from uh, Jan and Doug R. For years, the PKD community has been told to keep their protein consumption down to control the disease to some extent. Does the protein level in the keto diet not go against this or has the uh, theory changed? Yeah, uh, a very, very good point. And I definitely want to say here, you need to be aware of your protein intake still, I think. Yeah, those are still the guidelines and there is data out there showing that. Yeah, and um, definitely you, you cannot, especially as PKD um, patient, you, you cannot just start doing a ketogenic diet by eating um, amounts of, of, of meat and proteins um, not to take carbs into you. Yeah, uh, This can be a dangerous situation and you, you shouldn't do that. You should be aware of your protein intake, find the right protein take um, together with your nephrologist or a, nutri a nutritionist, for example. Um, however, there are also some recent um, clinical trials out there showing that the sodium intake is much more important than the than the um, protein intake um, regarding the impact on disease progression there. But still, this is a guideline. Um, we all followed it for several years. I, I wouldn't just like drop it now. I would definitely be aware of that. Okay, uh, from the chat, we have Tish K asking, 
Uh, how does alcohol consumption play into a keto diet? Uh, she's not speaking about umbrella or sugary drinks, but something like red wine uh, or whiskey. So uh, alcohol, what, what impact does alcohol intake have on a keto diet? Right. Um, ba basically, I, I, I cannot say much to that. Yeah, I, I mean, um, um, uh, alcohol is always uh, like connected to carbs, of course. Yeah, you're always taking carbs and this can bring you out of ketosis. And um, that's a thing you probably can um, can definitely count with any tracking um, apps, I, I could imagine, for example. But yeah, this is also carb and you need to count it, basically. Yeah. And we all know alcohol is, of course, um, not good um, in general. So you need to be careful with it. From Kim R, uh, was there was there any consideration for organic non-GMO food? Sorry, sorry, what was the question again? Was there any consideration with organic non-GMO food? What does the person mean with with considerations? I haven't analyzed anything in in terms of um, of this kind of food in my in my case series. Uh, we have another uh, question here, uh, or I think this is a comment. I lost 100 pounds with keto and fasting. Blood pressure went down and felt better. However, it didn't stop the loss of function. So that's, that's more uh, a comment from an individual that's joining us. Is there any evidence of activation of sirtuin one long term during maintaining ketosis? Should we be worried about that or the balance of mTOR and stat signaling reduction weights more than the impact on the CERT-1? Um, very, very, very good question. Um, very experimental question. Um, I haven't worked a lot with CERT-1. I'm not here. Um, um, I, I don't know the, 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 the recent results about that, so I cannot really say something about that yeah but this is a very very good point and um i would i would definitely take a look at it uh, after this webinar okay uh we've already addressed this question uh was there anyone on tolvaptin in this study wondering if there are any concerns with that medication and the keto diet so you've tackled that one yeah, uh, just, just to say maybe, I don't want to say that there couldn't be any side effects. Just in our study with those patients on Tolvaptin, they um, um, did good. I couldn't find any significant differences there. Yeah, but uh, still, of course, always um, give your doctor a heads up and consult him before you start something like that. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Uh, our next one from Andrea M. Uh, I read the kidney stone diet... Uh, I read the kidney stone diets that control oxalates. Oh, I think we handled this one. Is it possible that the benefits of the keto diet might be correlated to those studies? Yeah, we tackled that one. My apologies for that. Um, what stages of chronic kidney disease do you think the ketogenic diet may be most effective for with the understanding the randomized controlled study will be necessary to provide a better idea? Yeah. Um, great question. Um, we definitely want to know the, the answer for that. Yeah, so basically what, what does it mean? Um, uh, like a continued state, for example, um, G4, EGFR 30 means that your kidney is already quite damaged. Um, you have chronic kidney disease, you have lots of fibrosis. So the question is, is the ketogenic diet actually able to reverse something of that? Yeah. In the red model and in those studies from Jacob, he could show in rats actually that in some extent, um, the cis burden could be reversible. Um, however, if this is completely transferable to humans, we don't know. I would definitely say um, the chance when you are in, in higher stages of chronic kidney disease with not so much impaired um, um, kidney function, I think the, the chances are probably better um, for the ketogenic diets to help than an already um, con uh, like in, in, in severe stages like uh, G3, G4, G5. And as I already said, um, when you're in one of those um, stages, you should definitely uh, be careful um, with starting a ketogenic diet there. Okay, thank you. Uh, from Cynthia F. Will weather, will weather reaching ketosis naturally versus through supplement be studied as well? Are there current BHB supplements available that are kidney safe? Right. Um, 
I'm, I'm not aware of any study planned yet or started yet for um, BHP supplements and um, PKD patients. Yeah, we definitely uh, try to investigate experimentally um, the difference between ketogenic diet and exogenous BHP because there um, can be definitely differences. Yeah. Um, um, regarding the, um, the supplement, we always are very careful with that because the problem is there are different ketogenic um, supplements out there. Some are um, like esters, for example, some are salts. We all know salts um, can be a problem in PKD patients or people with chronic kidney disease, and you can like have a um, high salt intake by that. We also don't know all the different supplements that could be in those um, um, yeah, nutrition supplements you are buying. So for this reason, we are very careful um, regarding kidney health um, to take those things that are out there. And as I just mentioned, um, Thomas Wimes is working hard on that uh, to actually find um, a, a ketone body supplement that is um, safe for kidney. Thank you. Uh, from John de P. Is there a specific book or website or nutritional guideline reference that you can recommend, doctor, to better understand the clinical version of the keto diet? Um, all right, there, there is um, lots of stuff out there. Um, what I would definitely highly suggest is joining one of those um, great social media groups out there. Um, they are doing a great job and um, ask those guys who have lots of uh, and more experience actually than, than I do with it. Yeah. And that's what I would recommend. I would also join the Wimes Laboratory group. There's also um, lots of exchange in, um, in those experiences. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, was there or will there be any data regarding changes in kidney size via ultrasound or MII in study participants on the keto diet? Um, regarding my study, um, um, the, maybe, yeah. Um, we got some data. I will uh, need to analyze that. And um, this can definitely be part of that study, but I cannot um, make any statements to that um, yet of, of any results. Otherwise, I would have shown. Yeah. Um, but definitely, this will be, of course, a big topic in those upcoming trials, because especially with uh, kidney disease, like the total kidney volume uh, measured by MRI is one of the, the best measures you can actually have there. Yeah. Um, so this will be definitely involved in those next trials. Okay, thank you. Uh, from Emily M, were any of the participants taking sandostatin uh, lanreotide injections? Um, I cannot answer this question. We haven't um, really asked about all the uh, drugs and medication those um, participants are taking in. Okay, thank you. Um, could ketosis alone be beneficial to PKD or food restrictions, uh, or would food restrictions still be necessary? Could ketosis alone be beneficial to PKD or food restrictions, uh, oxalates, purines, et cetera, would still be necessary? Um, yeah, so, 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 okay. First, this question can aim in this direction. Um, could like exogenous BHB actually do all the same as a ketogenic diet does? Um, in rats, it looks like it, but in humans, we don't know. We know in, in uh, um, endogenous ketosis, it's much more going on um, when just like um, taking an exogenous BHB. Yeah. And then the other dimension this question has is like, um, can I forget about all the other recommendations for PKD patients like um, purines, like phosphates, like salts? No, not at all. I think it's very important that you need to follow all those guidelines. And that's the reason why for me, this, um, this ketogenic diet is not that easy for PKD patients, but because you should definitely watch your phosphate, your salt, your electrolytes and all that stuff. Yeah. So it's not just for PKD patients. I think just a ketogenic diet, it's actually a little bit more than this. And I think that's definitely important. Great, thank you. I just noticed uh, Professor Wimes actually popped up in the chat uh, and shared the Facebook group uh, for the Wimes Lab. Um, and there were also a couple other recommendations to which you spoke of earlier about the Keto and PKD Facebook groups. Uh, and I know that they're highly engaged and monitored as well. So um, again, be sure to check the chat um, and join those Facebook groups if you so choose. Um, from Louisa M. Uh, perhaps I missed it earlier, my apologies, but can somebody continue taking vitamins D, 
B12, omega, and zinc while on the keto diet? Um, again, I cannot um, make any uh, medical advice here, but uh, for me as a, um, a research scientist, I don't see direct um, concerns why not taking um, um, supplements like that. Okay, so again, but that will go back to, to discussing with your nephrologist every step of the way and, uh, and talking to them about that, of course. Um, from Georgia K, how long were the rats on a ketogenic diet before improvements were seen? Um, all right, this is a good question. So basically, um, Jacob put the rats, um, so in the first experiment, he put the rats, I think, on there um, at week three to week eight, which is um, the period where those rats see like a rapid um, development of cysts, okay? Um, and he treated um, those animals with time-restricted diet or BHB or a ketogenic diet for those five weeks. And then he uh, looked at those rats and then he saw those differences. And I think in the second model, if I recall that correctly, he started after this period, um, after the week eight, where they already developed those cysts and they don't have much cyst progression there anymore. And I think again for around five weeks. And then um, you could see actually that the cyst burden and the cyst size uh, was significantly smaller in those. So the time period was around um, five, uh, five weeks um, when I recall that completely uh, correctly. Okay, thank you. Uh, from Chris B, in your study, you discussed participants' uh, well being or improved state of health. Was this a purely subjective assessment of symptoms? Was there any objective measures of well being or improved health rather than just how participants reported their PKD symptoms? Okay, um, basically, um, no, this is, a, th this is a subjective measure, right? So we asked, especially also retrospectively, how did you, um, what kind of recurrent health issues did you have before starting that diet? And we had like a checklist, um, participants could check what they had before, could rate it in intensity, and they could also put other um, health symptoms there. And then we also asked some questions later, did you see any improvements after starting your diet? So definitely this is uh, subjective retrospectively um, collected data. And we couldn't ask those participants before they actually started the diet and afterwards. That was not possible in the study design and uh, wasn't meant to that. Yeah, but that's clearly one of those limitations I'm talking about. And um, for those things, we have also questionnaires involved in those upcoming studies to get some more um, uh, data on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're down to the last few questions here. Uh, so you're in the home stretch, Dr. Struble. Uh, MW is asking, have you considered the addition of probiotics along with the keto diet? Would this be beneficial? So the inclusion of probiotics. Um, very, very interesting questions. A uh, question I have never um, considered this myself, of, of course, yeah. Um, it could be could be interesting thing. I, I'm not completely sure what impact the ketogenic diet has on your microbiota. Maybe there are some effects, especially if you have side effects um, 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 relating to your um, to your intestines, for example. If you have any problems there, could be interesting. But I don't know. I don't know if there's uh, any research already out there or not. Yeah. Okay. Um, from David B. What is five weeks in rat years equivalent to humans? Yeah, right. This is a very good question. I, I also yeah. wanted to add this. You, you cannot transfer this um, equally, um, those five weeks to five weeks in humans, right? So this is definitely um, um, a longer time in humans, but I cannot uh, clearly say, or I, I'm not even sure if there's a real correlation um, in, in, in years or something like that. And maybe Jacob would know that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a problem. So I think also the five uh, months, um, which was the median time on, Debra, um, median time on, on average in my, my study here is still fairly short, probably. Thank you. Uh, and then I have the easy, I've given you about a hundred questions and I only get the last one here. Uh, it's just asking if this presentation will be archived. So uh, yes, it will of course be archived uh, on npkd.ca slash webinars. Um, from there, you can catch all of our past recordings and future recordings as well. Uh, so the uh, video recording of this presentation, along with the question and answers, um, will be available online at that link, npkd.ca 
slash webinars uh, in about one week's time. Um, we're open. We have a few minutes left. We're open to any last questions. I saw one. Uh, nope, it was just a comment that came through on the chat. So we'll just give it a couple seconds here uh, and see if any last minute questions come in. But I think we've covered an extensive uh, range of topics, Dr. Strugel. So thank you very much for, uh, for being able to answer the questions that you have and, and point those uh, in the right direction as well. Uh, yeah, thank you for inviting me. It, was it a doesn't pleasure. seem any uh, questions are coming in, so so we should wrap up as it is uh, right now. So, of course, from uh, the foundation uh, and the PKD community, Dr. Struble, this has been an absolute honor uh, and privilege to, to work with you this evening and to uh, be able to hear the insight firsthand. I think it's been a, a marvelous presentation, and I know uh, the recording will will help those people um, as well absorb everything that was taken in. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you again for inviting me. Okay, everyone in attendance, thank you for joining us. As I mentioned, please stay tuned uh, to npkd.ca and our social media channels uh, for upcoming news on our next webinar, as well as that three-day online symposium that we'll be hosting. Uh, thank you again for taking the time to join us. Uh, thank you to... Uh, Professor Wimes for chiming in there as well and joining us uh, from the chat. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care, everyone.